Hi all, welcome back to the channel. Before we dive in, check this out. I have converted this video. To this video. I have added the audio in editing, but the video is converted to ASCII. If you love ASCII art, stick around and I will tell you how I build this from scratch. So let's dive in. I have always been obsessed with ASCII art. You know those drawings which are made from text. Even my YouTube banner is also ASCII art. Recently, I was scrolling online and I saw people are converting their images to ASCII art. So I thought why not convert a whole video to ASCII and let's create a video player which will play your ASCII video. Then I researched online and I found out that many people have already done it. So I thought I will create my own. I will be explaining you the approach I have taken to build it from scratch. I will be breaking down my approach into steps and I will be explaining every step. First of all, let's see what is a video. A video is a collection of frames or images you can say. Frames will go one after another. If you have heard the term FPS, it is the number of frames which will pass one after another in a second. So as you can see here also, there are a lot of frames which will pass one after another which will create a video. If you zoom in on a frame or image, it is a collection of pixels. So you can say this is a pixel, this is a pixel, this is a pixel, this is a pixel. Generally, there are a lot of pixels. It is just an example for you to see how an image can be break down into pixels. So you can see each image, a computer sees a pixel as red, green and blue. And we will have three values which will define a pixel. So you can say a value between 0 to 255 for red, a value between 0 to 255 for green and a value between 0 to 255 for blue. And that will define a pixel. So generally, it looks something like this and this will create a pixel for you. For our project, what we have to do is we have to map this pixel to a character. And how we will do it is we have to somehow map these three values to a single value and map that single value to a character. There are a lot of algorithms for it. People have done a lot of research on it. What you can do is you can either average out red, green and blue and then you can find a single value from it and then you can map it to a character. But I have found out that human eye sees green color more than red and blue. So there is a different formula for it. You can use that. For my project, I have done it very simple. I have converted my image to a grayscale image and then I have used the intensity or brightness you can say to map to a single character. I will show you code and I will explain you every function what I have written. So let's get into it. This is the whole code base for my ASCII video player. As you can see, it is very short and simple file. These are the libraries I am using. These are the set of ASCII characters I am using to replace my pixels with. You can try with different types of pixels. Here I am sorting from intensity darkest to lightest. For my approach, these were the characters which were looking the best. If you have a different approach, you can choose a different set of characters. This also is very nice for a different approach and this also is very nice for a different approach based on the approach you can change the set of characters this play ascii video is the main method which i will be calling for my script and here it will be getting executed but i want to go from top to down and explain you every method and then we will go with the flow of the program as you can see i have hard coded also here so don't mind me it is just a demo so let's go to this resize image method Always document your method because uh, it will be needed for future. Generally, we tend to forget everything what we are doing. If you document your method, at least you will know what it is doing without going through the code. Also write some comment where you have some important logic so you don't have to understand the logic again. You will just read the documentation and you will find out what that uh, piece of code is doing. Generally, this is the best practice. I am the one to talk about who has hard coded, but anyway, as you can see here, I have taken a height and width of image. Very simple. I have got the ratio. Here, I have reduced the height by 50%. Why I have done it is that when I ran my video without this line, what happened is my video was looking very weird because the height of a character is always double than the width. Ideally, uh, approximately. After I did this, my video is looking better. So when you will replace your pixel with your character, it will not look weird if you reduce the height by 50%. This I found out very hard way. You can do it in your program. 
can uh, actually code along when I'm explaining and it will be better if you code along. Here you can see I'm just resizing my image and I'm returning the resize. So as you can see, this method is very simple, right? Uh, coming to the next method, which is pixels to ASCII. Here I am passing an image. As you can see in the documentation, it is very clear. It will map the single image pixel intensities to ASCII characters and it will return the ASCII string to us. How are we doing it? Same process. We are flattening the image, which will give us all the pixels. Then what we are doing is whatever the intensity is from 0 to 255, we are getting that ASCII character from here. Here, what it will happen is the value of pixel will be gone from 0 to 1 because we are dividing by 255. As it is 0 to 255, if it is 0, it will be 0. If it is 255, it will be 1. And the value will be from 0 to 1 here. And then that value is multiplied to the length of ASCII characters minus 1. So we can choose a character between this. So we will get that and we will concate in the ASCII string. And this is what will happen to every pixel in this pixels. This is what we will return without a new line. So the whole image will be converted to pixels. All pixels are converted to ASCII characters. It is very simple as you can see. So let's move on to this image to ASCII method. As you can see, it will convert image to ASCII. It is a very simple. Basically, this is the method which will be calling both the upper methods we have already discussed. The first is resizing the image. First, we will resize the image. We will clear the data. Then we will convert the data which we have cleared to ASCII string. Then what will happen? What we are doing here is the ASCII string we have got doesn't have any new line. We have got all the pixels in a single horizontal line. Then what we'll do is we will get the image width, which we'll use to add new line characters to our image. So basically our ASCII string was a whole line of pixels, every pixel. But we have to uh, make it an image, right? We have to add new line to strings. That's what we did here. So as you can see, it is very simple. What it is doing, it is going from the range zero. Uh, this is the last uh, length of string. And this is the image width. This is the step in the range function. And then I will be adding new line characters after it, joining the image from I to image width. This is what this function is doing. It is very simple function. So let's go to the flow of program and we'll explain this uh, play video ascii function in that so what we are doing is we are starting the video capture here is the video object i am getting and then i am checking if the video is opened or not if it is not open i am returning an error this is just for my personal thing i want to see if video was not opening sometime i was getting the error so i printed it so i would know that there is an error so i have not followed best practices for this but as you can see i am printing this so i will know that there is an error as you can see here i am getting the video fps what is the current video fps if i am able to get the fps it is okay otherwise the default i have made it 30. so there are chances is what i read online that you will not get the video fps the property you will not get from it uh, so basically i have defaulted to 30. Uh, what i have done here uh, if you are not able to understand is very simple frames per second is number of frames per second so per frame how much time we will get is this frame time so this frame time we have to wait for the frame to print then we will clear the frame and we'll print the next frame so per frame uh, how much time we have to wait for it to be displayed is calculated by here okay so if it's 30 fps it is 1 by 30 default is 30 fps if it's 60 fps is 1 by 60. so this is the frame time i have taken time of a frame to stay on screen then i have started a while loop it is very simple if it is opened i am reading the next frame one by one by one if uh, nothing is there i am breaking the loop here i have added a to do for me to look something into future to add colors and check other algorithms to convert my rgb to a single value so i have will see in the future for now i am just converting it to grayscale open cv2 has a method for doing it just pass the frame and you have to give the cv2 dot color vgr to gray it will convert your image to grayscale the same grayscale i have passed into image dot to ascii this flow you can see image is going here it is resizing converting your pixels to ascii the date image and then the whole string it is converting back to the image form like it will adding new line to it and we are getting back the image once we get back the image ascii frame what we are doing is we are clearing the screen i also didn't knew this i got it code from stack overflow and then uh, you can print the ascii frame the current frame you are removing and you are printing the ascii frame and you are sweeping the frame time which we have calculated it will be same for the whole video so you i have just calculated it here not in the while loop 
and after the whole thing is done i am releasing this resource so as you can see this is very simple code uh, you can do it yourself uh, let's see uh, by running it how the video looks So this is how the video is looking i will be adding the sound in the editing the sound is not added in the terminal for future i have thought of doing a lot of changes in it maybe i will create a video after doing those changes and i will be telling you what i have planned for this project in the outro so for this project i have planned a lot of improvements first of all i will research more in converting my rgb value to a single value what we were doing and i will be also experimenting with the ascii characters i will be using so that is the first the second thing i am trying to do is adding the colors to the ascii characters whatever were in the video if it doesn't look weird i will be trying that the third thing what i will be doing is i will be adding audio to my video for now uh, the demo i will be showing i will be adding audio in the editing if you are following along and coding yourself the audio will not play for you as of now and in the future i will be trying to add audio to it and we will create a update video on it so for that stay tuned if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe click on the bell icon so you will not miss any update i will be posting more videos on this channel so stay tuned and see you in the next video